I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. A little bit wet. It's raining outside. It is raining. I actually kind of like it. Okay. Yeah. We have something in California called the drought. That, yes. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll take this. Yeah. We'll, we'll take the weather any day of the week. You can take a bucket and bring yeah, some of it back to California. Yeah, some buckets. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so as I was saying, telling you before, I saw you in the Steve Jobs movie. You've obviously been in loads of films. How do you kind of get yourself ready to play a new character? Um, you know, I, I sort of... It, it comes about with the script. I mean, really, it's... It's one of those things where you, you sort of identify with something in the character. In this particular case of Ludlow, um, what spoke to me was he's this unhinged uh, social pariah who is prone to very explosive, insane behavior. And I hadn't really played that before, and I wanted to... There was something really fun about that idea to me. And obviously, you know, the 80s nostalgia got me very intrigued uh, growing up in the 80s. I was like, this is something I get. So did you used to play a lot of video games? I did. I mean, I was born in 1981, so I sort of, I was coming of age as arcades were fading out and Nintendos and home game consoles were coming in. Uh, so my games were more like Mario Brothers, Zelda, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, uh, things like that, into Tetris on Game Boy. Well, we're going to play a little game, oh. then, of our, of our own. Okay. Um, it's called What's More Likely. Okay. We're going to put two different uh, kind of video game characters out of their world and bring them into like a neutral world like you have in the film. And then you just got to tell me who you think would win between the two of them. So this is really subjective. I could win yeah. whatever I think. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not like, yeah, you right. can't win this all these. This is actually yeah. terrible. <laughs> so, um, Donkey Kong yes. versus one of the green laser cannons from Space Invaders. Ooh, yeah, the, the, the laser is a weapon. That's true. It would burn through Donkey Kong's thick, rugged skin. Okay, fair enough. Um, Frogger versus Centipede. Hmm, I would have to say, I'm going to go with Frogger on this, and I'll tell okay. you what. Frogger is, he's clearly very elastic he can get around quickly you know I yeah think he could i think he fooled him so the centipede would come after him but then he'd jump out of the way really quickly okay then he'd yeah. his tongue and eat them <laughs> okay last one then mario brothers versus mr and mrs pac-man in well, like a mr and mrs pac-man are going to kill really those italian boys i thought they might just get in a bit of an argument because like as a couple yeah they could just scream yeah. at each other yeah but i have a feeling when the screaming's done the Pac-Man couple is going to be hungry and just eat them. Fair enough. Um, did you get to meet the kids who played kind of the younger you in the I did, yeah. Actually, we, we sat down and, and just had like an hour or two with them so that they could sort of get our mannerisms down. Yeah. So were you kind of surprised? What was their video game knowledge like? Well, it's a lot more modern, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're clearly more into um, modern day games like Assassin's Creed and Destiny and things like uh, you know, Call yeah. of Duty. Um, obviously, in the film, you're fighting against these video game characters, which I hate to ruin the film for anyone. Is CGI? Um, is that way to go? <laughs> is that difficult to play when you can't actually see the things you're trying to kill? It's very surreal. Uh, looking at a tennis ball and yeah. uh, pretending that that's going to be Pac-Man, um, but it's also. I th it's what we're trained to do as actors, isn't it? Yeah. Just use your imagination. And there's nothing more imaginative than creating a world of arcade games come to life. Mm. And obviously in the film, Pac-Man is actually a bad guy. Did that throw you off a little bit? It threw me off It did. When I read the script, I, I didn't quite understand what I was reading. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think they've misunderstood the game. <laughs> uh, but that Professor Iwatani scene is just, I think it's such a gem. Because it's, you know, in, in the process of getting a lot of these... Uh, companies to commit to giving us the, the likeness for the games, um, a lot of them had this sort of paternal uh, response. They were very protective of the characters. And Chris Columbus had the inspired idea of making one of those creators, Professor Yotani, who created Pac-Man, an actual character in the movie, okay. talking to his little baby boy. <laughs> and I thought that that was so inspired lunacy. What was your favorite kind of sequence to shoot in the film then? Um, there's a sequence where I, I have this all-on verbal 
assault at a group of Navy SEALs that was really uh, <laughs> fun to do. Yeah. Were you at all slightly kind of scared when you're filming? Because <laughs> I was scared for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was definitely, uh, I was definitely <laughs> nervous about that. So then um, my final question, it's been great talking to you. Thank you. Um, obviously, you've got kind of like the dream team. You've got um, Kevin James, you, Adam Sandler, Peter Dinklage. Out of you four, who do you think would kind of, if this was happening in real life, would be best prepared to kind of beat the aliens? I think probably Peter Dinklage. Okay. If you've taken on dragons, you can sort yeah. of... T- I, I think you're prepared for video games. Fair enough. So after, like, after the events of, of what's happening in the Seven Kingdoms in Westeros, I think you're pretty much... This is a walk in the park. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for chatting. Thank you. Thank Mike. you.